Rakesh shrugged. Hunters win gold? You get one legendary hand cannon each. If not, I get... He dropped his voice to a whisper. The horn. Throw in a couple of umbral engrams, the Night Stalker countered, and you got a deal. Prakesh pretended to consider. It's a deal. He finally said and recorded the transaction in his data pad. Good luck in the Guardian Games, Hunters. Hunters rule, shouted Jean, to nobody in particular. Before starting, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Last week, I promised that I would create a website using Squarespace, and so here it is. I started with a custom template and then simply modified it to suit my needs. I literally did all of this in one morning, and if I can do that, anyone can. I have all the usual tabs you would expect, stream tab which links to my Twitch page, a video tab which embeds my YouTube videos, but what you are likely interested in is the Law Scripts tab. Here you can find the actual scripts of my videos if you would prefer to read them. In the scripts you will also find links to the Law tabs or Grimoire cards I have referenced. By the time this video goes live, the Law script for this video should be on the website. Of course, you can easily link all of your social media using Squarespace. I've inserted these icons across the top, but also a community tab. Obviously, I don't charge anything to join my Discord or any of my social media accounts. However, with Squarespace, you can create members-only areas. So if you do have a business where you can provide additional content for people, you can set up members-only content. Finally, if you've ever wanted to buy Gamma Trap's artwork that features on this channel, I have a tab for that too. Just click on Art. If you need a website yourself, you can head over to squarespace.com for a free trial and you can save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain by using my link in the description. Otherwise, I will also leave my website I created with Squarespace below and you can check out the lore scripts or artwork. And with that, let's begin this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. Let's begin with the release of Guardian Games. Four new lore entries have been released. One class item per class and one sparrow called Color of Speed. The sparrow lore entry is either a massive red herring, trying to bait us into predicting the next Vanguard Hunter, or of course, it could be a legitimate clue to Cade Six's replacement. Before we discuss the next Hunter Vanguard, as hinted in the new Sparrow lore, I want to briefly mention some of the new lore introduced with Guardian Games. Mainly because it's actually really funny, and Bungie makes fun of all the classes. And I don't think I would cover this in another topic. So let me run you through these fun pieces of lore. All of the three class items revolve around a character called Prakesh, who is an illegal bookmaker in the tower. Prakesh allows Guardians to gamble, placing bets on a number of different activities. Of course, with the release of Guardian Games, they are betting on who will win Guardian Games. Each lore tab for the Guardian Games class-specific item describes their interaction with Prakesh. In the Hunter class item, three Hunters approach Prakesh, an Arc Strider, a Night Stalker, and a Gunslinger. Bungie makes the Hunters sound like a group of awkward teenagers who tried to make a cool sounding gang, but failed miserably. Either that, or they are some sort of weird death metal boy band. You'll get what I mean. Have a listen to the Cobra's Hood law tab. It reads, The Hunters posed coolly in front of the bookie. The team leader, a gunslinger, casually flicked a knife between his fingers. I guess you've probably heard of us. Prakesh glanced at Tulnik, who shook his head. Uh, not really, the bookie said. Now what's this about? The Ark Strider stepped forward menacingly. Show respect, you're talking to the Death Dealers. Prakesh raised an eyebrow. Cool name. I once had a cat called Death Dealer. Behind him, he heard Tulnik guffaw. The Ark Strider snarled and sent a crackle of Ark energy rippling through his arm. But before he could strike, the Night Stalker blinked in front of him and put her hand on his chest. Whoa. Call it, Jean. He's not worth it. Remember your breathing exercises. The Hunters make a bet that they will win the Guardian Games. However, most people use chips to make the bet. But this group of Hunters are using what is described as a horn. It sounds like it is a trophy taken from someone. Hi. 
Marlon from the future here. I was just about to post this video and spotted a mistake. Initially, when I read this law entry, I only saw that they were talking about a single curling horn. And I saw a lot of people speculating that this was Lord Shax's horn, but I was not sure why. And that's because I did not read the flavor text. And the flavor text reads, I never did find that horn, Lord Shax. So this entry implies that this group of hunters actually has Shax's missing horn that's broken off and they're using it to gamble. Anyway, the cringe continues as they place their bet. Have a listen to the Cobra's Hood Law tab. It reads, You're damn right we do, the gunslinger replied. We're betting on hunters to win the Guardian Games. Hunters rule, shouted Jean from across the plaza. Is that all? Prakesh asked with confusion. That's stock standard. Why didn't you just put in a chip like everyone else? The Night Stalker leaned in conspiratorially. Because of what we're wagering, she said, and opened her pack to reveal a single curling horn. Prakesh's eyes went wide. Is that whose I think it is? The gunslinger crossed his arms smugly. You tell us. How did you even get this? Never question the death dealers. Now what's it worth to you? The gunslinger said. Prakesh shrugged. Hunters win gold. You get one legendary hand cannon each. If not, I get... He dropped his voice to a whisper. The horn. Right, so if the hunters are portrayed as an awkward death metal boy band, the titans are just downright stupid. It's actually pretty funny. I'm going to read you a chunk of the lore tab for Lion's Pride. See what you think. The sentinel stepped forward. We want to bet on the hunters to win the games. Prakesh's eyebrows shot up. Really? Do I smell a fix coming in? This is huge. He leaned forward conspiratorially. Zavala's not in on it, is he? The Titans glanced at each other in confusion. The striker spoke up. No, we want to bet on the Hunters. The bookie frowned. Yeah, you're betting on the Hunters because you're going to throw the matches. Their blank, helmeted stares prompted him to clarify. I mean, your plan is to lose on purpose, right? The Sunbreaker looked taken aback. Titans never lose to hunters. Yeah, we're much better at fighting, the Sentinel affirmed. Hunters are always jumping around with their little knives or hiding in smoke. He waved his arms around frantically. But I just put up my wall and then Tanishi punches them like really hard. It's true, the striker proclaimed earnestly. I can punch super hard. So your plan is to win, Prakesh clarified. The trio nodded emphatically. Then why, the bookie asked slowly, are you betting on the hunters? The sentinel scoffed, element of surprise, my man, they'll never see it coming. He and the sunbreaker fist bumped. But all bents are confidential, Prakesh explained. We wouldn't be here if we weren't confident, the sunbreaker bragged. Yeah, so times are betting on hunters to win, but still trying to win the Guardian games themselves. If you want to laugh at your Titan friends, I recommend reading the entire lore tap. Finally, Warlocks get made fun of a bit. However, I think they got off pretty lightly compared to the cringe of Hunters and the stupidity of Titans. The Warlocks are portrayed as upper-class snobs who think they are better than everyone. Have a listen to the lore tap from Phoenix's Fire. It reads, The Guardian's cloaks billowed in a non-existent wind, and their feet barely touched the paving stones. Prakesh rolled his eyes. Warlocks. Prakesh called out, Looking sharp, I love the... bird hat. This is Felwinter's helm, jackass. The Void Walker fired back. Probably cost more than your sparrow. Unlike the Titans, the Warlocks actually have a plan to cheat by influencing the mind of the top leading Titan in order to influence the outcome of Guardian Games. Have a listen to this. The Void Walker tossed her head as if flicking her hair, then realizing she was still wearing her helmet, awkwardly put her hands on her hips. Let's just say she's about to have a bad case of existential dread the night before the match. The Warlock snickered. Little trick I picked up from the Scions. The Voidwalker finished. Titans put all their armor on their chests, 
the sun singer opined, and none between their ears, like a castle with no roof. Right, so there you have it, Bungie having a bit of fun with the lore during Guardian games. I highly recommend reading each lore entry yourself. Now let's move on to the lore they released that could hint at a new Hunter Vanguard. I will read you some of the lore from the Sparrow, Color of Speed, and you will know straight away who they are speaking about. The scene describes Osiris visiting Ava to ask for a favor. The lore tab reads, It's good to see you back in the tower, Osiris. Ava watched him out of the corner of her eye as she put the kettle on. I'll take it you're not here on official vanguard business. No, I'm not. I'm here to ask a favor or contract your services, whichever you'd prefer. Osiris perched uncomfortably on the edge of her couch. Ava smiled. His regalia looked a bit absurd, set against the mundanity of her cosy apartment. I'm always happy to grant a favour to an old friend, even if I'm the old one now. She examined her self-serious visitor with a gentle gaze. What do you need? A custom hunter cloak, something that resembles feathers of a crow. I'm sure there are plenty of outfitters in the tower that would do a fine job. I gave up on custom outfits years ago after my fingers started to go. She massaged her knuckles reflexively. I need someone I trust, someone who can keep a secret. Osiris fixed her with his inscrutable gaze. If you agree, a ghost called Glint will come by later to help choose the fabric. Right, so obviously Osiris is trying to get a custom cloak made for Crow, but is this just a thank you present or is this something more? Is this gift planned to welcome Crow into the Vanguard? He did just save Zavala's life in Season of Chosen. Ava does ask if it's official Vanguard business and Asara says that it is not. However, does that mean it's just top secret? Or does it imply that Asara is just doing something nice for Crow? Regardless, the last couple of paragraphs of the Lord Tab seem like bait. The Bungie writers definitely want us to suspect that Crow will be the next Hunter Vanguard. Have a listen to the comparisons made to Cade 6 and needing someone worthy. The Lord Tab Color of Speed reads, A secret cloak. This is just the type of thing Cade used to come to me for. In fact, the last hunter cloak I sewed was for him. She drifted off sorrowfully and poured the tea. Now months later, she puts the finishing touches on the requested garment. The black fabric soaks in the meager light, highlighting the delicate white silk. It's as fine a work as she's ever done. Ava can't help but wonder who the new cloak is for? Who could warrant such secrecy? She just hopes it will be worn by as worthy a hunter as her last. Honestly, I can't tell. I think this could go either way. I do think that Bungie has done a great job building Crow's character. He has heavily featured in recent stories, and to be honest, they have been successful in getting many players to forgive Crow for his actions in his past life. So what do you think? Is this a massive red herring, or is this in fact pointing towards Crow being the next Hunter Vanguard? Let me know in the comments below, and if you can't think of a comment, you can leave the word Crow to represent the potential next Hunter Vanguard. As usual, it's been a pleasure. This is Marlin Games. Peace.